Welcome, everyone in the listening audience, to our daily program, Kabbalah for Heretics. Good to see you all, or good to know that you're all out there listening, and uh, we'll take up with where we left off yesterday morning in the Zohar. Before I do that, however, as I've already announced, for the next year, every morning, I'm going to recite the Mourner's Prayer, the Kaddish, for in memory of Leonard Cohen. It is traditional for someone to do that. And uh, although Leonard, like myself, was not religiously a Jew, he was highly identified, self-identified as a Jew. And in his honor and uh, for his sake, I will be at least reciting the Kaddish every morning for a year. So let me now recite that Kaddish for this morning, and then we will get back into the Zohar. In memory of the Tzaddik, Eliezer HaKohen, Leonard Cohen. Yiskadal v'yiskadal shmei rabo, bomo divroch yirusei v'yamlech machusei, בחייכון אבי יום יכון וחיי דחור בית ישראל, בגלו ובזמן כל רבים מרועמין. יהי שמי רבו מברך ועולל מיומיו. יסברך וישתבח ויספאה ויסומן, ויסנשא ויסלה 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 על שמי דקוד שוב ריחו. לילו מנחו ברכוסו ושירוסו, תושבכוסו ונחמוסו. דמירו ובמרו ובמרו אמן. עושה שלום ומאמוב, הוא יעשה שלום, עלינו ויעקור ישראל ואמרו, אמן. Now let's get back to where we left off in the Zohar yesterday. We're in volume four, Vayikra, uh, very close to the end of volume four, having finished cover to cover volumes one, two, and three, over the past 20 years, every weekday morning. We come to uh, now a section in the Zohar that takes up the uh, esoteric secret meaning of the written scripture. If the anointed priest shall sin so as to bring guilt on the people, Now, let me remind you, this is what the Zohar is. The Zohar is a, a midrash. What it does is it takes portions of the written Torah and then, after quoting that, gives the secret oral Torah behind that written statement. There is no way to understand the written Torah without the oral Torah. That's why it was given to Moses orally, telling Moses not to share it with the Gentiles, but to keep it only among the Jews, so that they may have a proper and full understanding, a deep esoteric understanding of the mysteries of the written Torah. So the, the passage from the written Torah that we're going to look at now for its esoteric inner hidden meanings. If the anointed priest shall sin so as to bring guilt on the people. Now this is an interesting passage because also in the teachings of the rabbis it is stated And in the secret teachings, it is stated, even if a coin has sinned that morning, if he must do, if he must say the priestly prayer in synagogue that afternoon, he must do it, even if he has sinned in the morning. Let's look at that. Of course, that tells us that that. The priest is a different person when he performs 
the ritual blessing of the congregation than when he sins as a person. But this would seem to contradict it. Let's see. Rabbi Abba cited here the verse, Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, if thou know not, O fairest among women, go thy way forth. From Song of Solomon. The companions, he said, have explained these verses in reference to Moses at the time when he departed from the world. As it says, quote, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, appoint a man over the congregation who shall go out before them, unquote, from Numbers. We may also, however, suppose them to be addressed by the community of Israel to the Holy King. In the book of Rab Hamnuna, the elder, it is written that so long as the community of Israel is in the Holy One, blessed be he, the Holy One, blessed be he, so to speak, is complete and pleased with himself from sucking the milk of the supernal mother and from that draught like he waters all the others and gives them suck. We have learned also that Rabbi Shimon said that as long as the community of Israel is in the Holy One, blessed be he, the Holy One, blessed be he, is complete and joyful, and blessings abide in him, and issue from him to all the others. But the community of Israel is not in the Holy One, blessed be he. Then, as it were, blessings are withheld from God and from all the others. The secret of the matter is that wherever male and female are not found together, blessings do not rest. Do you hear that? I hope those of you in the listening audience understand how radical this is. Because in fact, in rabbinic Judaism, in Judaism as it is practiced, the woman and the feminine is excluded actively. in practice, in actual, literal practice, and justified by the rabbis. But this secret doctrine, this secret teaching of the oral Torah, given to Moses at the same time as the written Torah, says, if they are not present, God is not there. God is not complete. Can you believe that? I can. It's right here. Right here. It says, we have also learned that Rabbi Shimon said that as long as the community of Israel is in God, blessed be he, God is complete. As long as the community of Israel, notice he doesn't say the children of Israel, it says the community of Israel, which includes those grafted into it, the Gentiles grafted into the community of Israel, becoming, therefore, occupants of the house of Israel. Without the community of Israel, God is not complete and does not receive blessings. That's what this is saying. Shut the hell up and listen. Quiet your egos out there and listen to what it's saying here. Oh, I never heard it says a thing. Of course you never heard it. You weren't supposed to hear it. That's why it's in the oral Torah. You weren't supposed to hear it until now. Because we're told when the Messiah comes, as he has come, twice at this point, first with Yeshua by Miriam, and then again in the 17th century with Shabtai Sri, until that coming, we are not to share 
the secrets of the oral Torah with the Gentiles and, uh, and others. But once he does come, as he has come, then we must share it with them. So you haven't heard it. Of course not. But you're hearing it now. So shut up and listen. Without the community of Israel being in God, God is incomplete and does not receive blessings. God does not. Rabbi Shimon said that as long as the community of Israel is in the Holy One, blessed be He, and that is a part of a name for Sephira Tiferet. If you had the diagram of the ten Sephiris in front of you, you would see why I'm mentioning that. Sephira Tiferet is called the Holy One, blessed be He. And Israel is in it because all the aspects the disunified aspects of the of God and the Godhead have come together into Sarah. So it says, as long as that happens, as long as Israel enters into the Holy One, blessed be He, God is complete and joyful, and blessings abide in Him, and issue from Him to all the others. But when the community of Israel is not in the Holy One, blessed be He, then, as it were, blessings, blessings are withheld from God. The secret of the matter is that wherever male and female are not found together, blessings do not rest. Let me repeat that. Let me repeat it for those of you in the listening audience who may not be listening. If you're here to listen, then listen. If the community of Israel is not in the Holy One, blessed be He, then blessings are withheld from God. The secret of the matter is, now this is the secret matter, it may seem counterintuitive, but it is the secret matter. The secret of the matter is that wherever male and female are not found together, blessings do not rest on God or the world. Now, I've been teaching this for as long as I've been teaching the Zohar, which I've told you is at least 20 years on the Internet. When one of my students brought this to the attention of an Orthodox rabbi, oh yes, yes, he said, and then he totally, totally turned it around and interpreted it to mean something other than what it's saying. There is a refusal on the part of Orthodoxy to accept the necessity of the union of male and female, the reunion of male and female in God, before God can be blessed and thereby bless the world. We must first bless God, then God will bless the world. We must first heal God, and then God will heal the world. And how do we heal this God? By reunifying its male and female aspects so they are one again. Because in the creation, they divided Keter, the Holy One, blessed be He, divided into Chachma and Bina, Abba, Father, and Ima, Mother. And it is that division that must be healed. And until it is, God is not blessed, and therefore God cannot bless us. Please, God, let them hear. <laughs> But when the community of Israel is in the Holy One, blessed be He, and unites the male and female principles in the Holy One, blessed be He, then God is complete and joyful, and blessings abide in Him and issue from Him to all the others. 
But when the community of Israel is not in the Holy One, blessed be He, then blessings are withheld from God and thereby from all the others. This may sound familiar to all of you. It is a major teaching of mine. Heal God and then God will heal you. Forget about healing yourself. Forget about healing the others. Forget about healing the world. That's not the, that's not the task at hand. The task at hand is to heal God. To reunite the male and female aspects of God so that he may again be one and his name may again be one. And then God will turn and bless us. Father, please let them hear this. Not my words, but thy words. Not their words, but your words. Please, Father. That concludes our program for this morning. Now, a few of you who are here by my invitation to ask questions and make comments, if any of you have any, raise your hand. Yishai, go ahead, please. Waiting for Yishai. Again, uh, just to remind everyone in the listening audience, if you have comments and questions that you want to ask of me, attend these recording sessions and ask them of me in person. Do not send me emails or any other such written uh, materials, please. But you're more than welcome to attend these recording sessions so that you can ask me questions in person. In the meantime, we're, we're waiting for your shy's in-person question. Your shy says, extremely power-dense, Program skimming me, slamming me with the Holy Spirit, rocking me and tearing out tears. God cannot receive blessings if God is not healed by the reunification of male and female in God by the community of Israel. Ah, fantastic. Absolutely. Absolutely, Yishai. Brilliantly said. That's, that's it. That's, that's our teaching. Please, God, let those who are in the listening audience hear and understand that, as well as you have heard and understand it and understood it, Yishai. Thank you. All right, we'll close for this morning. We'll be back on radio uh, tomorrow morning, continuing with our study of the Zohar. Until then... Follow God, not your egos, not your friends, not even me. Don't follow me. Don't follow your ego. Don't follow your friends. Follow God and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you all.